Today, Steve has prepared about a 20, 30 minute presentation, given an overview of his work. So he'll do the presentation and then the committee will engage in some discussion with Steve. And then after that, if we have a little time, we can take some questions from the board. We'll just go ahead and get started. Okay. Pablo, would you close that door for us, please? Projects in case study in the interaction, collaboration, knowledge construction. So, before I really get going, I want to uh, thank my uh, dissertation committee for their comments and their feedback and support along the way. And I want to also thank my colleagues from the Use Lab and C Tools, many of whom are here today. Thank you for coming. Um, my fellow graduate students, the School of Education, and as well as my friends and family, many of whom are here today. So, thank you. Very briefly, um, so very quickly, this is a quick overview. Um, I'm interested in how students use learning management systems uh, within the context of a small case study that looked at one biology course and the student's use of the LMS uh, for their term project. And that term project was a semester-long project. And at the end, I'm going to discuss how the LMS met or didn't quite meet students' needs for communication, organization, and learning, that finding that fit. So learning management systems um, bring a whole host of management, communication, and different web tools within one environment. Um, today, um, they're very ubiquitous. Um, over 90% of uh, universities across America and uh, across Europe and many parts of the world today are using these systems. So whether that environment's Blackboard, Moodle, or Sakai, they're nearly, nearly ubiquitous in higher education for courses and designed for student learning. So when you think about learning management systems, the way they're usually referenced in the literature and when people usually talk about them, they talk about course sites. And the course sites are designed so that the instructor pushes materials out to students. And the instructor is one of the structures that facilitates the interactive activities, like online discussion and chat as well as manages all the files. Another way to look at them is what I'm calling project sites. That's what they're called here, but there's various ways they're referenced throughout the, throughout the literature. And they can, my example is students, but they don't necessarily have to be students. It's anyone in any, it can be any role in that kind of site. So the, while the instructor could be present, instructors frequently are not present in, in these kind of sites, and they're not in my study. So within these, within these kind of sites, the students can decide when, what files get uploaded, uh, when, the, when the announcement gets sent out, or what things to talk about on their site. Um, and while these systems overall are called quote unquote learning management systems, is learning really happening in these systems? Or are the people within them just organizing materials, etc.? What is really being managed within these people uh, when students are left with their own devices? So I, I looked at how students use LMS to communicate and work together with the context of their group projects. When I talk about use, I'm defining that as peer interaction. It's the term I'm using to encompass all the communication that happened online these, within these systems. So whether that's an announcement, an email, online chat, online discussion, that's all what I'm calling interaction or peer interaction. And the peer interaction is my big construct. And within those, I'm distinguishing, distinguishing peer interaction into three specific types. Basic interaction, <coughs> collaboration, and knowledge construction. So I'm going to define those for you really quickly. Basic interaction is any kind of communication that takes place online within an LMS tool. Um, this could be group communications about sports, school, society, or even Sinatra. Uh, but all forms of basic interaction. Um, and while I can't rule out that other interactions may occur um, outside of the LMS, my, my study is really interested in the effects of students' use with LMS. So I'm only looking at interactions that are evidence within the LMS itself. And more specific, we have collaboration. And that's when students engage in pure interaction that serves to develop and or sustain shared ideas about a collective problem within an LMS tool. Um, so this is the focus on a shared conception of a problem that's collectively negotiated by group members. And 
So an example would be, you know, if they're talking about biology, for example, it might be a student saying, I think mammals are more intelligent than non-mammals. Or they might make an observation like cell mitosis might be a good topic for a group study. Um, so if they're talking about maybe a group meeting, discussing when to have that meeting would be more basic interaction. But the interaction that happens within that meeting may be collaborative. And finally, I have knowledge construction. Knowledge construction, um, there's almost a couple, there's a couple things going on here. So collaborate, it's collaboration with the LMS tool between students when either new information is conveyed from one student to another and retained by the receiving student, or a new understanding is elicited by students through their collaborative interactions. So an example might be Sarah tells Jack about the development of plant cells. The following day, Jack tries to relate the plant development cell to invertebrate cell development. Um, he might be wrong trying to apply that new knowledge, but he's trying to apply it. Um, another example might be Sarah and Jack together discussing about plant about plant development together from the prior knowledge discovering a new way to think about plants, about plant cells. So for those of you that are more, more visual, Again, this is forms of pure interaction. That's my great, that's my overall construct. So the big, the big category is basic interaction. This, is, for example, two students talking online about last week's trip to Mexico. You know, so that's all interaction, all the communication that happens online with the LMS tool in the LMS. Getting more specific, there's collaboration. And that could, an example of that is students using the communication tools to discuss the findings of a recent research article about Mars. And they get even more specific, this distinguishing pure interaction even further, is knowledge instruction. An example for those of you in the back there um, is a group of students use the LMS communication tools to discuss their theories about what causes lightning, and together they arrive at a new shared understanding of this weather phenomenon. So those are the examples I give, but how does, really, how does this all really play out in a real situation? Or how do students use the LMS for peer interaction? So to answer that question, I have an overarching question at the top there. My overarching question is how do students use the LMS to interact, collaborate, and construct knowledge in the context of a course related project? And then I have, a bun, I have a several um, sub questions to help answer that question. But in general, A is all about what students do with the LMS, B is how students use the LMS, C is when students use the LMS, and D and E are really why students use the LMS the way that they do. You'll see these again. So you need some sort of context to actually explore that research question. So I looked at an upper division uh, course in biology, or um, in, yeah, it's biology. And um, within that course, um, it's really thought as a capstone course. It's designed to be the last laboratory experience for biology students graduating from the program. Now, within that course, they have a term long project, and they had to write um, a mock NIH grant proposal, which if any of you have ever seen an NIH grant proposal, they're pretty thick. Um, so it's a, heck, it's a hefty project. And students can either complete that alone or in self-selected groups of anywhere from two to six students. So I have groups of very different sizes. And the goal of the term, pro of the term project was to give students an experience in understanding how to sell their research ideas to someone else and how to be successful in obtaining the money to accomplish their objectives. There, as you can imagine, is a fairly large course. There's 126 students enrolled in the site. All, all students were invited to participate in my study, whether or not they used the LMS. Um, and about 21, 21 groups formed, uh, sorry, 32 groups formed overall, and 21 of those groups used the LMS, representing about 66% of the overall course, or 82 <coughs> students who used the LMS overall. You can see some of the demographics there as well. So in order to examine what students did with the LMS, I had several different data sources. The first data source um, was the actual messages that got sent online. And what I did is, you can imagine that students, if they're on an online chat, there might be five, five chat messages, students bouncing back and forth about arranging a group meeting. So what I did is, uh, using, using 